Nerero Cave, also known as Grata di Nerero in Italian, is an enormous sea cave located in the northwestern part of Sardinia, specifically in the Corral Riviera of Alghero, Italy. Its name was given by the explorers as a tribute to the mythical character Nereus, who is often described as the old man of the sea and the father of the Nereids. The cave is situated beneath the towering limestone cliffs of Capo Caccia, positioned 318 feet north of the renowned Neptune's Grotto. Considered the largest marine cave in the Mediterranean Sea, Nereo Cave boasts approximately 10 entrances, arches, and tunnels. Divers can explore its depths ranging from 0 to 114 feet, traversing through extensive and spacious tunnels, air chambers, and various passages. The cave's walls are adorned with vibrant red coral and yellow leptosomnia, creating a visually stunning underwater environment. One of the remarkable aspects of Nereo Cave is that it falls within recreational diving limits and offers relatively straightforward navigation. Consequently, this diving site in Sardinia serves as an excellent introduction to cave diving, allowing divers to experience the beauty and wonder of underwater caves without the complexities associated with more challenging locations. During his childhood, 24-year-old Eli Frank developed a fascination for underwater adventures by watching television shows like Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea and Flipper. The captivating world of scuba diving excited him and he nurtured a strong desire to learn and explore this thrilling activity. In college, Eli happened to be roommates with Tom Holmes, who possessed a wealth of experience in cave diving. Recognizing Eli's enthusiasm, Tom took it upon himself to guide and mentor him in the art of diving. They quickly became dive buddies, and Eli embarked on the journey of obtaining his basic scuba diver qualification under Tom's guidance. Motivated by their shared passion, Tom and Eli began embarking on diving excursions to various locations on weekends and sometimes even during the midweek when there were fewer divers around. It was during one of these adventures that fate brought them in contact with three other divers, Beth, Ollie, and Anna. The five of them formed a close-knit group, becoming dive buddies and venturing out together to explore different underwater environments. While exploring various dive sites, Eli and Tom stumbled upon a guidebook that detailed the caves in Italy. This guidebook provided invaluable information, including directions and descriptions of several hidden spots that were not widely known. It encompassed a diverse range of attractions, such as freshwater springs, wrecks, and reefs. Among the many intriguing locations mentioned in the guidebook, they were particularly thrilled to discover that the Nereo Cave was a mere three-hour drive away from their current location. Nereo Cave, with its reputation as an ideal dive destination, captured their imagination. Excited by the prospect of a recreational dive in such a remarkable location, the group collectively decided to plan a visit to this renowned underwater cave. The anticipation of exploring the depths of Nereo Cave only served to heighten their enthusiasm and strengthen their bond as they prepared for this unforgettable diving experience. On a fateful day, Eli found himself assigned to safety duty outside the entrance of the cave, a precautionary measure due to his recent experience with mild decompression sickness two weeks prior. However, as he observed the excitement and anticipation radiating from his fellow divers, he couldn't resist the temptation to join them in their underwater adventure. Making a spur-of-the-moment decision, Eli made his way to their dive truck and swiftly suited up since all their diving equipment was conveniently stored there. As Eli approached the group, fully geared up and ready to dive, his presence surprised the others. They questioned his decision, expressing concerns about his recent health condition and whether he was truly prepared to undertake the dive. Eli reassured them that he felt positive and confident about joining them, convinced that he was physically capable and mentally prepared for the experience ahead. The planned dive was scheduled to last for approximately three hours, during which the divers aimed to descend to a depth of 98 feet within the cave. Recognizing the importance of safety, the teams took precautions by bringing along backup oxygen supplies to address any unforeseen difficulties they might encounter during their underwater exploration. 
the group decided to split into two separate teams to ensure efficient and organized diving. Team A consisted of Tom, Eli, and Beth, while Team B comprised Ollie and Anna. Each team would commence their dive simultaneously, embarking on their respective underwater explorations within the Nereo Cave. They went over their dive plan again for the sake of Eli, who had joined the Team B exploration group, making them three divers. Despite having backup oxygen that could last an additional three hours, they all agreed not to exceed their planned three-hour dive. Although that was agreed upon, both teams descended into the crystal-clear waters with Team A leading the way, followed closely by Team B. Carefully navigating through the narrow caves, the divers skillfully made their way towards their agreed destination at a depth of 98 feet. However, just as Team A reached their target depth and began their ascent, a troubling situation happened. Tom noticed that Eli had become entangled in the line within an unsuitably narrow air pocket. Adding to the urgency of the situation, the line had become hooked on an obstruction, preventing Eli from ascending freely. Faced with this predicament, Eli resorted to using his torch to signal his distress. After becoming aware, Tom turned back and assessed the situation. The sight that awaited him was distressing. Eli, who had been caught in the entangled line, exhibited signs of fear, resulting in frantic kicking that stirred up silt, further reducing visibility in the area. Additionally, the confined air pocket exposed Eli to an elevated level of carbon dioxide, compounding the urgency of his rescue. Tom and Beth immediately sprang into action to free Eli from his entanglement within the line. However, their efforts proved challenging as Eli was severely tangled, making it difficult to swiftly resolve the situation. Just a few minutes later, Team B arrived at the scene lending their assistance to the ongoing rescue mission. Recognizing the increasing complexity of the situation, the divers collectively made a decision. Beth and Team B would venture out to notify the authorities, alerting them of the circumstances and initiating a potential rescue dive if, after two hours, the distressed diver had not surfaced. Meanwhile, Tom remained determined to continue his efforts to free Eli. Drawing upon his extensive experience in diving and his ability to remain calm under pressure. With their roles assigned and an agreed-upon plan in place, the remaining divers turned their attention to the exit route. However, due to Eli's struggle to free himself, the water surrounding them became clouded with a significant amount of silt, reducing visibility and making it more challenging to see the guideline that marked their way out. Nevertheless, they managed to locate the guideline, allowing them to follow its path as they made their way toward the exit. With the departure of the other divers, Tom now faced a new challenge, ensuring Eli's well-being and mental clarity while they both remained in the cave's atmosphere. A critical concern was the composition of the cave air, which contained a higher concentration of carbon dioxide compared to the air at the surface. The National Institutes of Health provide valuable insights into the effects of carbon dioxide exposure. Carbon dioxide in high amounts can act as an asphyxiant, impeding the body's ability to absorb the oxygen present in the air. This phenomenon becomes more pronounced as one breathes in an environment rich in carbon dioxide. The consequence is a potential reduction in oxygen supply to vital organs and tissues, potentially leading to adverse effects on the body's functioning. The impacts of carbon dioxide exposure can manifest in various ways, ranging from physical discomfort to cognitive impairment. Symptoms may include dizziness, headaches, excessive sweating, fatigue, numbness or tingling sensations in the extremities, memory lapses, nausea, vomiting, feelings of depression, confusion, skin and eye irritation or burns, and a persistent ringing in the ears. Therefore, it became crucial for Tom to actively monitor and manage both his and Eli's exposure to this potentially harmful gas, even as he was trying to rescue him. Once the remaining divers returned to the surface, they wasted no time in reaching out to the authorities for assistance. A call for rescue divers was promptly made. However, despite the swift response, it took some time for the rescue team to arrive at Noreo Cave. 
In the meantime, the divers on the surface explain the details to the authorities, providing a clear picture of the situation in which Eli found himself. They explained how he was entangled in the narrow air pocket and the silt accumulation within the cave. These allowed the authorities to better understand the gravity of the situation and mobilize appropriate resources for the rescue operation. Meanwhile, deep within the depths of the cave, Tom persisted in his determined efforts to free Eli from his entanglement. Utilizing a diving knife as his tool of choice, Tom meticulously worked through the tangle of lines. Gradually and with great care, he managed to cut the line. After what felt like an eternity, nearly 30 minutes of intense effort and dwindling hope, Eli was finally freed. A surge of relief washed over them. The backup oxygen supply they had brought along played a crucial role in sustaining them throughout this situation. However, due to the unforeseen delay caused by the rescue operation, they now faced the necessity of extending their decompression stops by an additional 45 minutes. These necessary safety measures allowed their bodies to gradually adjust to the changing pressure and minimize the risk of decompression sickness. Eventually, with the added time factored into their ascent, the divers resurfaced safely. Upon reaching the surface, the divers were greeted with immense joy by all, including the awaiting rescue divers, who were equipped and ready to dive into the water. The divers were taken by helicopter to the nearest hospital. At the hospital, the divers underwent thorough examinations to assess the effects of their prolonged underwater stay and excessive carbon dioxide exposure. Given their extended time spent submerged, they were diagnosed with mild decompression sickness. Additionally, the divers exhibited symptoms of hypothermia, as the cold waters had taken a toll on their body temperatures. During their stay in the hospital, the divers received comprehensive care and treatment. As part of the recovery process, supplemental oxygen was administered to help counteract the potential damage caused by excessive carbon dioxide exposure. Despite their hospitalization, it didn't take long for Tom and Eli to yearn for the underwater world. Once they had made a full recovery and received medical clearance, they returned to the depths alongside their trusted team. I guess once a diver, forever a diver. But by all means, be trained, carry out all the necessary safety precautions, and don't break any rules. We would like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching, take a dive on the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell icon so you get notified when we come back with another exciting cave diving story.